I know you're tired of dating apps, which is why I'm gonna show you three ways, three, three ways that you can find love that's not on a dating app. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Jasmine Diaz, celebrity matchmaker. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about a really fun topic, which is how to find love that's not on a dating app. Like how do you connect with people now in 2021 in a way that is not online? I'm about to show you exactly what I do as a matchmaker to find singles for my clients. So I'm giving you tips and tools that are ready to use that you can put into your pocket and put into practice right away. So let's dig deep into the conversation today. But of course, if you're not a subscriber, I encourage you to do so. But if you're not in the mood to do that, that's okay too. So where can you find love that's not online? One of the places that you can go to if you aren't already a part or in the know of this little piece of information is social clubs. So social clubs are places that you can actually physically go or there are social clubs that are strictly online. So there's a couple that I'm gonna just ring off right now, but I will say that this is this list that I'm about to give you isn't a list that I consider to be like the, the end all be all. There are definitely more social clubs that exist in your market perhaps that you already are aware of and maybe some that you're not, but a few examples of social clubs are like Soho House, Noi House, if you happen to be in Los Angeles, Ivy is actually more of a digital social club. It used to be a physical place that you can go and socialize with other people and all of that. Spring Place is another social club that has a destination. So what exactly is a social club? So for those that are actual physical spaces, they are opportunities for you to mingle and socialize with other people. Most times it is industry related. So if you are in entertainment, um, there might be something that's more conducive to that, but it's mostly for professionals who really want to expand their social connections and yeah, come together under some like great circumstances, whether that's music, there's food, there is, you know, just experiences. So whatever it is, they have it. I have been a part of social clubs for a number of years and one of the social clubs that I am connected to is Ivy. Uh, Ivy used to be a place where you could go and have different kinds of experiences with people in various industries, but they have since changed their platform. But another really popular, well-known social club is Soho House. They have multiple locations across the world. Um, again, connecting professionals in various industries, people who are very driven, successful, high-minded, those are the places that a lot of these people dwell. And so if you are thinking of how to connect with a professional, successful person, social clubs are a really great way to have those connections. Some of the social clubs have functions that they coordinate every single month. So it gives you an opportunity to not only get to know the member base, but it allows you to expand your social horizon. So if you're the type of person who has been dating in the same social group and you're trying to figure out how the hell do I get up out of here? This is exactly the place that you should go. So the next place you can go to find a partner that's not on a dating app is actually something that I use all the time as a tool that a lot of you are sleeping on, which is LinkedIn using your digital networking force to work for you. So one of the things that I most enjoy about LinkedIn is that it gives you some insight really easily, basically at your fingertips. First, you know that the person's employed. Second, you know what they're educated in, right? Most times people on LinkedIn have where they've gone to school and some other accolades that they have listed there. Gives you really good input into who they are and a little bit of what their story is. But what I also love about LinkedIn is that if you are really tied into activities, which means you are active on the platform, you can read through some of the things that an individual cares about. If it's posts, if it's articles, whatever it is, it really gives you some insight. So LinkedIn is definitely a sleep on tool, but you really have to use this platform 
in a way that doesn't cross the line because the truth is LinkedIn is not a dating site. So there are tips and tricks and ways in which you can actually navigate finding a partner on LinkedIn. And I would highly advise that you consult a professional when you're trying to do it for yourself. But I would say don't, don't ignore just how powerful your social network is. And that doesn't have to be just LinkedIn. If we think about more broadly to the people that we know, the connections that they have, that our personal network is actually very strong. But I think what happens for so many others is they get really stuck in the same cycle of friendships, right? You see the same person, you guys go out to eat the same, it's just all the same, it's the same everything. Now you have to really push yourself in a way that might make you uncomfortable in order to expand your social group. But if you're using LinkedIn, definitely tap into some of the connections you already have. Those first connections, second connections, which is usually people you know who know another person. And really, you know, maximize all your efforts. Now, if you want to know exactly what I do to connect with professional singles on LinkedIn, unfortunately, you're going to have to hire me. But <laughs> ah! my earring dropped. <laughs> My earring was not happy about that. But if you wanna know a little bit more, I'd be happy to do a more thorough video on LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is definitely one of those resources that you might not be tapping into. So the last way to find a partner that's not on dating apps, I have to say, is not the only way. I just wanna say that, I wanna throw that out there because I don't want you guys coming for me saying, Jasmine, there's so many other ways in which we can find a partner. Yes, I know. But anyway, the best way uh, that I would actually suggest that you connect with someone great is to think about your hobbies. This is something that so many people do not understand. I get this question so often, which is how do I find men? How do I find women? How do I make connections with people that are really interesting to me? Well, think about the things that you enjoy. I think one of the wonderful things about where we are in the world is that things are starting to reopen. People are starting to get more energized about having experiences and they want to have experiences with other people like you. So if you think for a moment exactly the person that you are, what your lifestyle is like, the things that really matter to you, think about what that is and where that person might go. Now, if you're someone who is into health and fitness, for an example, then you want to consider maybe doing more wellness-based activities, whether that's doing hiking, maybe join a club that's conducive to that. Maybe you're a runner and you wanna join maybe some running groups. Um, definitely tap into the things that really, really matter to you because those are some hidden places that people who are single happen to be. I think most, most people who are looking for love they want to find someone that shares common interests. And if you're not actually allowing yourself to be exposed to people who have those same common interests, then of course you're going to be missing each other. Okay. Of course you are. But if you actually think through like, what are some of my passions? What are some of my hobbies? What are the things that I am so excited about? Maybe you're a bookworm and you're really into all of the like science fiction and all of that kind of stuff. Think about the things that a person like you would want to do, like places you'd want to go. If you're really into tech, think about the different functions that you can go to that are catered to that demographic. So all of these things that I say might sound like they just, you know, Jasmine, this just, I already knew this information. Well, if you already knew it, my question is, why aren't you doing it? But before you do anything, any of these steps or take any of these steps or try any of these places, I want you to first start from the beginning. I want you to get clear. I want you to think about exactly what you're looking for and why. This is something you'll see as a theme for me anytime I talk about this before we start venturing off into 
what we're looking for in a partner, you really do have to understand what you're looking for. And once you have that goal set in mind, I tell you, baby, go ahead and find it. I know online dating seems like it's the only choice right now, especially under these circumstances. But if you are brave enough to go out in the world and start meeting people again, then you are brave enough to join a club, to go on a hike, or to try LinkedIn and connect with that first connection. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you didn't already hit that subscribe button, I'm just wondering what's wrong with you at this point. But I will see you next week, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to talking to you more about dating, love, relationships.